Sydney Web is a leading provider of online solutions. The in-house team consists of 14 programmers and designers that have developed over 260 projects to date and some of Australia's most prominent and well-known websites. Govcast Webcasting and Webinar Solutions provides a powerful distribution system for streaming conferences and live events and can be edited and archived for subsequent on-demand viewing. Throughout the years, teaching has not dramatically changed in the way teachers and instructors deliver their course material. However, technology is now changing the way students learn. This is the basis of a two-part report on e-learning and its impact on Australian enterprises. Data from multiple research reports indicate that e-learning has come a long way since the 90s of global revenue of $2 billion per annum to a current estimated global turnover of $23 US billion. By the end of the decade, it is expected to grow to revenues of 50 US billion dollars per annum. The industry is comprised of various suppliers in the form of content and technology providers. Intel, with global revenues of over 34 US billion dollars and a market cap of 152 US billion dollars, is a technology innovator that pioneers new markets as a way to ensure demand for computing power. It is the world's largest chip maker and considered a leader in manufacturing of computer, networking and communications devices. Asia Pacific alone accounts to 45% of Intel's global revenue. <laughs> Intel has been innovating in education since 1968, further accelerating its involvement in 1989 through to today. Intel's sponsorship of the Intel Teach the Future program is part of the Intel Innovation in Education initiative, a sustained commitment in collaboration with educators and government leaders worldwide to help prepare students to succeed in a knowledge-based economy. We sat down and had an in-depth, candid conversation with Australia and New Zealand's charismatic and enlightened chief, Philip Cronin. Can you tell us a little bit about what programs Intel is currently undertaking in the e-learning space? We have a, a worldwide program that's been running since uh, the year 2000 and in Australia we've been running since uh, 2003 and it essentially is a program that's designed to enable teachers to uh, learn how to use technology and embed it within the curriculum to have real outcomes for our students. We've had huge success sort of in Australia. It's running in the three states of uh, New South Wales, Victoria and Queensland and to date we have some 3,000 teachers fully trained on the program and we envisage that that will continue for the next few years and we, will, we have a goal to increase that number as we go forward. What actually led Intel to develop this Teach the Future initiative? Well, it's a recognition, as you said earlier, that uh, Intel is an innovator and they, uh, has, has a real role to pay, play within the industry and it's a recognition that Education and technology are the way of the future. Uh, we live in a world in which technology continually is, is one of the main drivers of both the economy as well as our education world. So Intel has always had a strong view that education, uh, obviously being a technology company, we, we're surrounded by educationalists and technologists. So we've had this strong view that um, we needed to invest in the future of education, particularly as technology changes every year and so forth. So in 2000, the program was kicked off um, by our, C, our then CEO, Craig Barrett. Um, we've had the program evolve, and as I said, in 2003, it landed in Australia, and we've been very successful with it so far. Philip, the education industry has been an early adopter of e-learning. However, what are your sentiments when it comes to private enterprises and their e-learning initiatives? Well, clearly, yes, the, and education is an early adopter, but equally business is not so far behind it. I think um, Australia itself is, lends itself to e-learning rather well because of obviously the distances, the geographical um, uh, remoteness of some of the areas, particularly if you looked at the program we did in Western Australia with uh, the education department there, they are trying to address a, a, geographic, a huge geographical area. They've got some 780 schools to address with technology they've got. They need e-learning capabilities, they need technology that underpins it. We worked closely with them to deliver that to some, I think it's close to some 70,000 students, um, some 14,000 laptops for teachers and so forth. Uh, those are the types of programs we would like to continue doing. We'll do them at, on many levels. We have a, a program currently running at the moment which is uh, around the universities of Australia, which is to have unwired campuses uh, in some 25 is the target of the universities in Australia with the intention that as the universities on wire, as they have 
pure broadband wireless capability. The students uh, who are working within that uh, environment will no longer need to work within the computer laboratories as such, will be able to work collaboratively to take advantage of the new changes in the software and technology. And also, if you take that to its furthest extension, as those students come out of university, they will be moving into the business world, in which clearly we will have changed the way in which we do business, changed the way in which we do things online, changed the way in which we collaborate and the way in which we work together. So it's a way of linking what's happening at both the, the primary level with the Teach to the Future program, the uh, tertiary level with our Onwar University program, and then as you take that on out into the business world where we have typically case studies and involvement with companies such as Deloitte's, uh, teaching hospitals such as the Alfred in uh, Victoria and uh, Griffith University Teaching Hospital in Queensland. Philip, those are certainly interesting stories to share with us. Intel is in a very unique position being essentially such a large organisation having presence in every market that one can think of. What are certain lessons that Intel has learned in deploying e-learning initiatives? What would you say if there are any sort of common mistakes that organizations make when budgeting, planning, and deploying, and down the track managing an e-learning initiative? It's a very good question. Um, I, I think the way to look at it is perhaps slightly differently. We, if you think of, of the technology simply as to underpin the delivery of e-learning in many ways, or e-business in many ways. And Technological advances keep coming at us, and so to try to formulate a budget for it is rather difficult. And I'm not so sure that companies have made mistakes. I think perhaps have under budgeted is, is a better way to look at it. Um, clearly, it, it requires a long-term view, and it requires a view of working closely with your provider or your solution partner. And typically, with the larger organisations, Intel will work closely with with them to say. This is the long-term view that we see for either e-business or e-learning or content delivery or changes in collaboration and software. Those are the key learnings that a company can have. Uh, in terms of budgeting, it's simply one of recognizing that this is a long-term gain for an organization and technology is a way of underpinning that delivery. Every e-learning deployment is unique as the organization is unique. However, should there be certain metrics that senior executives should be aware of in terms of budgeting for that infrastructure? Again, another one of those, those, those interesting questions. I think, Billy, if, uh, for, to look at it from the infrastructure perspective, go back to, as I said earlier, it's really one about having a, a concurrent budget. And I think we, there isn't really a figure you can put on it. And I, I'd really be hesitant to put one on, but I think I would argue that as an organization, we should look for the outcomes that you're looking for rather than simply, okay, I need to budget this.